blessing of the Torah. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our power, King of the universe, who has chosen us from amongst all people by giving us your Torah. Blessed are you, Yahweh, giver of the Torah. Amen. Shalom, shalom to the remnant, to the call, to the elect, to those that are chosen and remain faithful to Yahweh, Yah, Yahushua, and his Holy Spirit to the very end of the matter, to the kingdom come. This is Sibaya. I got a brief message. I got a brief response. I got a brief something to say. As you can see, the title here is part by this time, you would have saw, saw part three, part one, two, and three. If you haven't, before you listen to this, I suggest that you go back and listen to all my lessons on the name and particularly me casting down every lie that is coming out of mouth of this frog or this snake. I call names. Yes, I do. I call names. I, I have no class. See, Baya has no class. According to y'all, I'm not allowed to teach. But who said I don't have, I, I can't school? I school. Y'all like that. And so I know they're going to come back with a whole lot of riffraff to divert the argument. They're going to talk about my JJ. They're going to talk about Adam and Eve and Eve and Mama Eve again and the serpent and Eve and Eve is the flesh. They're going to talk about a woman's submission and smack a woman. And they're going to talk about a woman can't. A woman, 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 right? And, um, that's all they're going to talk about. Don't be fooled. That's that's the virtue from hearing Yah's word. Not me. I don't speak for my vagina. I speak from the mouth of Yahweh. I know that there's a lot of doctrines from the Christian doctrine from every day. Women are not allowed to teach and speak. Only women. Well, most of my assembly is women. Go figure. What about the other ones? I'm raising them up to be warriors to speak against you too. Just like the boar. For those of y'all that want to believe that foolishness when the Bible clearly shows you every example of a woman doing everything that a man can do except two things. What is that? Pick up a physical sword and fight on the battlefield with men. And what's that? What's the other one? Make a sacrifice. Outside of that, there's nothing that a woman can do. Oh, you're supposed to be married. Shut that up. Mirayim, Moshe's and Aaron's older sister, the one who led them, the one who had was the first prophet that we know of as a female. She didn't have a husband as far as anything we know, nor do we know that she had any children as far as we know. Don't mention nothing about it. You know why? Not important. Guess what? Regardless of what took place at that period of time between Moshe, Aaron, and their older sister, Miraim, who was almost 100 years old, y'all. Almost 100 years old, worthy of honor and respect. Y'all had enough honor for her, but had to give it her honor, this honor, between them. This was between Yah, Moshe, and Aaron. Not between the people that she had to leave the camp, but the camp had enough honor while she was being dishonored in the face of Yah, to sit still and wait for her. They couldn't move without her because Yah sent all three. Say it ain't so. I sent my prophets and my priests and a king, all three, male and female. Moshe was the prophet and king, the power, the El to Pharaoh. Aaron was the high priest and Mirai was the prophetess slash the one that helped bear the word. And whatever happened between the three of them, when I was between Yah and them, no man, no ruler of their tribe, no head of their household, no prince, no Sanhedrin had a right to say anything to Mirai 
regardless of what happened between her, Moshe, and Yah. That was between Yah. Yah deal with that. That's who she answered to, Moshe and Yah. And for all the rest of the other women, if you want to know what the word really says, there's no such law in the book that a woman can't teach. No such thing. Show it to me. Paul didn't say that. Paul didn't teach it. Paul did not tell a woman that she's to shut up in the assembly. Paul did not say that it's a shame for a woman to speak in the assembly. He did not say it. Learn to read. Learn to read. Because you'll see two different quotes and two different languages. And what they did was mix up Paul's words, just like you mixing it up now, lying on what he said. And if you still want to choose to believe that foolishness, all you got to do is keep reading the next verse. Where he says, what then? Did the word only come to you or through you or by you, oh man? No, it didn't. And it never will just come from you. It never did and it never will. It's a lie from the beginning to the end. And y'all not going to embarrass me. You're going to shame yourself because all you're going to hear is truth come out of this mouth. And all you will be doing is speaking against the truth, not me. I represent the father that sent me. And I told you from the very first video who I am. And that is not the I am. It is I am a prophetess of Yah that came to tell you, oh, house of Israel, niggas and all. That you're going to hell if you don't repent because you have falsified Yah's word. You have abused Yah's word in law. You have done violence to his law. You do not plead the cause of the fatherless, the children. You do not plead the cause of the widow and the woman that don't have a covering. Your cause is your penis. Therefore, there's no justice. So half of you that's part of the Ahaya dumb illiteracy camp. You didn't even listen. You won't even listen to the truth to seal yourself. I'm not the first one that have come along that have tried to tell y'all y'all in grave error. You didn't listen to them. So let me tell you something. I said from the beginning, I ain't got no class. See, Baya don't come to speak the niggas with class. I don't curse, but I'm going to bring the curse of Yah on you through the words that he spoke already before I was ever born. I said that I'm an Ezekiel prophet, Tess, and I came to mock you the way you mock Yah. Talia don't speak this way, though. So you, brother, who said that I falsely accuse you, I did not falsely accuse you. I assume, that is, I'm assuming, that is a clear declaration. Don't take my word as the truth. I could be wrong, but I believe that it was. So I'm going to apologize to you for nothing. Because you're still guilty with the words that you spoke to me behind the scene. I still find you guilty as you say that the nature or the statue that I'm supposed to be, what would that be? Claim it before you disclaim it. What nature and statue am I supposed to be that I can't call you fathead? Tell me. What statue is that? A mother? Show me a mother that smack their little fathead, nuthead, knucklehead little boys in the head when they disobey. Show me a mother that didn't talk to their little boys like that. Ooh, I'm calling you a boy. That's right, you breast suckers. And I'm showing you every step of the way that you don't know the word. You don't understand what you're reading, nor is there an ounce of righteousness in you to even consider that you're foolish. You don't scare me 
You can make all the videos you want. You seal yourself. What you do to me, you have done to your whole show. You up here want to make a name game? I call names. Y'all up here crying about I called you fathead. I called you bald head. I called you frogs. But yet, somehow you could just say woman and it's an insult. You're a bunch of crybabies. But you can't deny the word that I brought because you're a bunch of liars. So do your video and you're going to get smacked back, clapped back harder than that. A woman of my statue, I was sent to mock you. I was sent as an Ezekiel prophet, just as proudful and foolish and ignorant and mocking and scoffing as you are. That's why it's a reproach. It is a reproach that I, Sibaya, a woman in Yah, got to speak to niggas like this just to hear truth. And they still won't hear. I've already showed you, you can come with the quorum as a woman. They got a scripture on it. Woman, shut up. Don't tell me about class when you done told the woman that she has no right to speak. What class should I have when you try to muzzle the truth? These are men that don't know how to play a fair game. The game is already rigged so that they never hear your voice. Class or not, decorum or not, person or not, scholarship or not, PhD or not, spirit or not. They'll even deny the spirit that's in you, that he couldn't be of your whole world because I'm not in you. That's how these niggas talk. You got to listen to them. You ain't got no spirit without a man, submissions. You hear what I'm saying, right? That's what they teach it at the end of the day. That it's impossible for you to have the image, the truth, the word of Yah inside of you. To be in a relationship with Yahushua if you're not in submissions to their emissions. Man, suck yourself. Because that's what y'all are all in doing. You bunch of cocksuckers. That's what I said. I'm going to show you all day long that y'all about the homosexuals and your, your women's are sleeping with homosexuals. And you're spreading your nasty AIDS, homosexual disease to the women. Which is foolishness. Oh, you don't like that talk? You don't like that talk? I'm going to show you the talk that you give women 24-7 against the truth against the truth. Now I said it again. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I ain't got no class. You damn right I ain't got no class. Because I'm here to show you the way y'all feels about you. Through the mouth of this donkey. You blind mules. I'm here to show you how y'all feels about you as a woman. To him. Your big mouth, disrespectful, no class having niggerettes. That's what he sees you as. And that's why he sent me to represent you. Couldn't no man represent how you behave to your whole show right now. It got to be a loud mouth, classless, mocking, don't shut up, don't relate, hard-headed woman, right? Because that's what y'all are. So he sent me just like you. I declared it from day one when I got on, got on, and I'm declaring it to the last day. Ain't nothing changed. Now, if you can show that you got some decorum, that you got some circumspect, that you got some righteousness, that you can hear the word of truth, no matter where it comes from, that you would follow the word, then we can have a conversation. And even in that, I'm fair enough to let these niggas speak their foolishness. Did I chop up his words? Did I play with his words? I let him speak, didn't I? And then I spoke. Now, if y'all think this is a game, I said again, y'all, I call names. I've been calling names and I'm going to still call names. I'm going to make fun of him. That's right. I'm going to mock them. I'm going to scoff them. I'm going to call them every name that I'm allowed to call without being defiled by my tongue. I don't have a dirty mind 
but I understand your dirty mind. I'm giving you back how you think. Because that's what y'all thinks about you. You're a bunch of whores. You're a bunch of nasty prostitutes that open your legs everywhere. And you cheat. One dollar for a blow. That's what y'all are. You open your mouth. Shut your mouth. Prove what I said is a lie. Prove that this Negro, this snake, is not lying on everything that he's reading. And all of you that is in his assembly should be offended to find out that he's cherry picking, cutting up, rewriting, rereading, retwisting the very thing that he's teaching you. You should be offended. You that are underneath him. Now, you don't like my story? Guess what? It's the truth. And my receipts show that it's the truth. And my receipts show that I had the quorum with him, that some knuckleheaded nigga got up there that I don't know who it was with his chauvinistic sh shenanigans. What, you don't believe that your wonderful moray behind closed doors is full of crap? You don't believe that he could treat a woman that way? Well, he did. Once again, this wasn't about her getting involved in nobody's marriage. This was about a woman, a single woman, with nowhere to lay her head but in the car in the street with a daughter, with a teenage daughter. No food and no place to rest her head. We and you sit and you sat up there. After asking all of the questions and you heard the answers and sat up there and said to her face, tell me I'm lying. You said to this woman's face that said, I'm hungry. I don't have no food. I'm cold. I'm sleeping in my car at night in parks where it's dangerous. And you said to her, will you submit sister? You just submit. We gonna get in touch with him and we gonna help him. That's what you said. That's what you said. You finished answer, answering, asking her question. Now you dictated to her what she was gonna do in order to get some food. And you told her that she had to submit to a knucklehead nigga full of sin in order to eat. You wicked, wicked, wicked devils. And you going to hell for your faulty, evil judgment. That's this nigga that I'm talking. I don't care how sweet he kiss y'all niggas when y'all argue. He's a faggot. And he loves men. I said, it's a bro code all over here. And behind closed doors, y'all do it all the time. You front in the faces of the sisters but y'all are liars. You can't stand the thought of a woman eating if she not sleeping with a man. You can't stand the thought of helping a woman and she won't submit to a nut. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me that's not y'all foolish, evil, wicked doctrine. And you call me a liar? You say that I'm lying about what I just showed you receipts of? I'm lying on him? I don't deserve to call him everything that he is? that he has no integrity, none. This man has no integrity. He's just proud. And you saw my disposition, even with the foolishness that they said to me and they said to Miss Malcolm. You saw my words, my bad. Let's just call this a mistake. I'm out. Did you see me call them names? No, but they call me names, right? They try to call me arrogant. Talking about the sister ain't going to eat because of me. No, it ain't because of me. The fact that you even denied my receipts and you think that you got a claim on me against this nigga, you out of your mind. Talking about I'm out of order from the beginning because I'm talking about him now. I talk about all of y'all and your wives. Play with me. Now, why would I do that? You don't think you deserve that? 
after you blaspheme y'all's name like that? You want to cry about somebody calling you names? You in the courtyard playing? And you want to get over here and play with women's emotions? And she said, get away from here, you nasty nigga. Get away from me. I don't like you. And you go crying to the other day. <laughs> she called me names. She said I was nasty. I got naked boo-boo in my bed. You know you stink. That's what I said. Because I called you a true name. I didn't lie. Did I lie on anybody? Then the name is true. That's your name. That's why he said he said he's gonna turn your men into women. They sitting up there thinking that they warriors. They more decked out to the wind, braces, ambulance, and all of this. Just pretty got colors. Oh, got a ZZ for every sneaker, for every color. Just feminine, right? Soft and feminine. Like these Negroes can fight in clothing like that. <laughs> Right? They sitting up and yeah, I got some weight on me. That's right. I'm the mother of Zion, stressed out with these babies. That's right. That's right. With an athlete underneath, but y'all a bunch of fat toads sitting up there. Reading book after book after book after book after book after book. And you lost in this stuff. Because the very book that you use to try to disprove something is the very idols and doctrines that you pick it up from. Now, I call names. That's going to be the title. I call names. I call names. That's right. And I call out your name. And if you, fathead, is not the one that was on that video call, then give up your fathead brother that was. Let me know his name and put his face up there and I'm going to call him some more names. Now, all of y'all, I don't care what they put out about me. You refuse to see that I'm showing you that you're being lied to. You're an idiot because even Satan sits at the council. You refuse to show the evidence. I don't know no court in this world that dismisses a woman's evidence because she's a woman. How ridiculous is that in the eyes of justice, in the eyes of righteousness, that I can't bring my case because I'm a woman? What world do y'all want to live in except this transsexual, faggot world, Sodom and Gomorrah? You want to live in a world where there's no women to counsel, there's no woman to speak for the balance of righteousness and relationships, y'all are out of your freaking mind. You want to live in a world where you want you don't understand the plight of a woman in this walk? And I'm going to say it again, there's no way in this word that tells you to submit a woman. Nowhere. And there's nowhere in this word that tells a woman, obey, obey her husband. Find it for me. You ain't going to never find it from the New Testament to the Old Testament. It doesn't exist. That word obey is what Yah uses for those that dispense his word as the prophets and the judges to the people, male and female. That word outside of that is only meant towards parents, male and female, to children, male and female. Outside of that, y'all never uses the word obey between a man and a woman, never. The word women submit yourselves is called free willing, I submit. And if we don't free will submit, then it's not submission, it's you lording over us, leaning over us, becoming a Baal, a God yourself. 
And Paul already spoke that everybody is free in this. He holds nobody to a wicked relationship, to an unwilling relationship that a woman has a right to leave. I didn't say a right to go get married again. She has a right to, to, to leave for her peace. Because Yah has called all of us in Shalom. And a man has a right to leave for his peace. Tell me it ain't so. So now, I call names from beginning to the end. But in this, when we're dealing with a holy name, a holy name, a holy name that your salvation is predicated upon, not just grace, not just grace, but the commandments, the commandments and the testimony of Yahushua and he who calls on his name, the name of the father, the name of the son and the Holy Spirit. What's the name of the Holy Spirit? Your salvation is predicated upon, and this is not a joke. It's not a joke to play guessing false scholarship games with. Not a joke. So I want to show y'all something. I, I, I just want to uh, cue up a couple of things. This is not going to be long. This is just to help y'all understand me. Before somebody tried to dispense me, I've already talked about me. So, Today is not going to be a long lesson for the past um, weeks, ever since Shavuot. What we do every year is we take time as a group. I don't just sit up here and just dispense knowledge and put clips up and say, okay, next. We study the Torah ourselves so everybody should know that they know for themselves. So that they know that the words that I speak are now. I do profoundly speak out on these words, but not before getting the every word. And we read together. I'm not up here scholarshipping over, lording over the people with falsehood. I don't rule. Y'all's words rule. That's what we do. And for the past weeks, we've been going over all of the Ten Commandments. And we got about three more to go deeply into from the new to the old and everything in between of the prophets, what they got to say about that commandment. And... We are going to talk about the name. You will get that later, even though I've been dispensing about the name. But before I go into it, let me just go ahead and go into it to help y'all understand why this ain't no joke and why I got a right to mock them if I'm the mouth of Yahweh speaking as a prophetess on behalf of Yahweh. I'm speaking on behalf of what Yahweh feels. I'm speaking on behalf of what Yahweh thinks. I'm speaking on behalf of what Yahweh has to say to you. And I trust you. Trust me. He got more to say. Now, once again, GOCC has propagated this foolishness and it's satanic. All their information is coming from satanic doctrine. And in the satanic doctrine, is where they got the whole Ahayan thing from in the first place. We have all been reading Exodus 3, 14, 15, and 16. We've all read that. But nobody, even in the English, has misunderstood what his name is. Or misunderstood that that was a statement and not a name. Where did y'all get that from? I'm going to continue to prove that as I go through his falsehood and reading the encyclopedia. Reading Kabbalah. Reading mystics, mysticism, trying to expound upon the universe of power and knowledge and manifestation. The Ahaya movement doctrine did not start with black people. It did not start with Elder Ricard. He got it from the secret occult. And where he got it is based upon, based upon, he has many names. The doctrine that Ahaya is a name is based upon the doctrine of Kabbalistic thought that he has many names. None of them doubt Yahweh is his name. But in order to make sense of this Ehyeh, they have to 
take this doctrine. But you niggas have taken another step further. We got wicked witches that dare not curse Yahweh. We got satanic people that dare not curse Yahweh. We got churches and Christian churches all over this world that dare not curse Yahweh. It doesn't mean that they call upon him. We got Jewish people that dare not curse Yahweh. You the only stupid niggas that's dumb enough to curse the name of Yahweh. You the only stupid ones. As Yah has said, it is you that have profaned my name amongst the Gentiles. It is you. Even the ones that took up the higher doctrine has many names, did not curse the name of Yahweh. You are the fools that took up an Aryan racist doctrine, an Aryan hatred racist doctrine that Yahweh is Satan. And you are walking no lines here. You are hanging off the line by the skin of your teeth on this one. Because the law of Yah concerning his name says, I will not hold him guiltless. By saying that, he is saying, automatically you lose your soul if you don't get this right. How could Yah put such an attachment to knowing and mis not misusing his name if he would hide it from us? That's not even a fair judgment. Reading the 10th commandment, you shall not misuse the name of Yahweh your Elohim for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that misuses his name. There's no in between. There's no in between because Yah requires you to call out his name in order for him to answer you. But you got this doctrine. He heard me when I was calling you. No, he didn't. You're wrong. He's been calling. He's been calling. He's called you. He did not hear you yet. He did not turn his face towards you, but his voice went out as a call to stubborn Israel. What you did was hear a call and you misunderstood the call. Because you thought the call was to claim that you Israel. But the call was to return to me and call on my name. To Shuva, repent. That was the call. The call, he's been calling. And so your ears, all your ears had to do was stop being stopped up and you would have been heard. But no, it doesn't mean that he heard you even when you called on Jesus. Now, they use the term misuse here because it's all around. It determines for you to go into the word to understand what misuse means. Here it is in the Hebrew, and it's not going to be an extensive lesson. Lo tisa, the word tisa, this word right here, it says shall take, but it means lift up. Bear, carry, take forward, as in move around, bearing it on your mouth, bearing it. So, you know, you can hate something so much that you lift it up, that you take it up on your mouth. This could be for the good or for the bad. But he said, you shall not lift up to take hold of and carry about at Shem, the name, Yahweh, Eloheka, your power, Lashav, right? In vain, but we're going to get into that word, Lashav, comes from the word Shav. In vain, overall means to misuse, to bring it to emptiness, to bring it to vanity, worthlessness, deceitfully, to bring it in falsehood, to lift it up, bear it on your mouth, in falsehood, to say false visions in his name, to lie in his name, to make it useless, meaning don't say it the way the Masorites have done in the Oxford, to bring it to falsehood, 
to bring a false belief about his name, to bring it to no avail. You shall not take up the name. So in order to keep yourself safe, because you don't know that you know that you don't know that Yahweh is not his name. You don't know that. You cannot know that that is not his name. It is better for you not to say it, but to misuse it and to blaspheme in it. Ooh. You in trouble. Nobody mess with y'all or hire people until you started trying to destroy Yahweh's name. Do you know why you try to destroy his name? Because Ahia can't stand with Yahweh there. Because then you would have the many name doctrine. We don't have the many name doctrine. And you know that the many name doctrine goes against scripture. So in order to promote Ahia, you got to kill the true Yahweh. But you run a risk for your soul trying to do so. Because there's no excuse for it. Lasha ki lo yinake. I will not clear you. Meaning I'm not going to hold you guiltless. How does people say, he heard my voice. He blessed me. He loved me even though I called on Jesus. Do Did our people blaspheme Yahweh's name? Even in the Christian church? No. You misunderstand. Even the Christians don't blaspheme his name. Right? But, but yet they do. They do bring it to naught. Because we're going to talk about blaspheme. This is bring it to naught. The word blaspheme is different. Guiltless, I will not clear you, meaning you're not going to stand before me clean. How, if you're not clean, not key, guiltless, cleared, clean. If you cannot stand before Yahweh clean, then how can he forgive you? Yahweh. Sorry. Et asher yisa, that you will take up et shmo lasha, in vain. I will not hold you guiltless. You think that's a joke to play with false scholarship? You think that's a joke? And you said yourself, I know Yahweh is mad. I know he's not pleased. I know he's steaming up there, listening to you call him Satan and Lucifer and the devil. And you think that he's going to send a prophet to come with the quarrel to speak to you about how you are blaspheming his name? Hells to the no. This word, so Exodus 20 and 7, that's what it says. We have this as well. I believe this is Leviticus 19 and 12. It says, you shall not steal. You shall not lie. You should not deceive one another. Didn't I just prove that this man, one, is stealing other people's research. Two, is lying to you. Three, he's deceiving you. You shall not swear by my name falsely. Meaning you should not take an oath in my name and do all these things. In falsehood and profane the name of your Elohim. I, Ani, Anoki, Yahweh. But that word here, profane, is Khalil, Ahul. And it means blaspheme on the surface. But this is to call it what is good to say that it's evil. It means to slander his name, meaning to falsely say something about his name. To lie on his name, to puncture it, to wound it, to bore a hole in his name. And boring that hole also means when they put in different mikwadot, mikwadot, they had to say it's Shahua, it's Shahawa, it's Shahaya, Yahawasha. All of that is to bore his name, right? To pollute it, to defile it, 
That means you mixed it with something. To put the microdotes of Adonai and Lord on Yahweh's name is to pollute it. To loosen it, meaning free from obligation. To desecrate it. To violate it. To lightly esteem. And you think I don't have a right to do that to you? Though I'm telling you the truth about you. To dishonor. You want me to honor you when you dishonor my father and your father? To, to treat ill, to treat commonly, to stain, afflict, to make weak or sick, to ill treat his name in the archery, to be easy about his name, to deal with it lightly like it's not a big deal, to dishonor disgrace, to make it a mark of shame, to make it inferior. And in other words, there's ways to break down or break up that word. It means to roast like peanuts. That's where we get roasting from, right? You sit on a hot seat and you roast somebody's what? Character. And to roast their character is to mock them, make fun of them and exaggerate them and dishonor them and that's what y'all have done to Yahweh you have roasted him and therefore I'm gonna roast you you think you don't deserve to be roasted after roasting Yah's name do they deserve to be roasted yeah. that's right I'm gonna show you how much roasted you deserve Leviticus 24 11 through 16, Shemelon's son blasphemes. We know this is another word. The son of an Israelite woman whose father was an Egyptian went out among the children of Israel and the son of the Israelitish woman and man of Israel strove together in the camp. So we had a fight, Mr. Malak. We strove. Now you're going to blaspheme my father's name? Huh? And the son of the Israelites' woman blasphemed the name of Yahweh because that's how you think you're hurting somebody by talking about their daddy, their mommy. We all know that from the hood. Your mama, your daddy. What happens when you talk about somebody's mama and daddy? You supposed to go, they, they were talking about you. <laughs> mommy, they were saying something about you. And mama going to be like, and what you say? Look up like that out there and smack him in the face. You don't let nobody disrespect your mommy and daddy like that. Sure. <laughs> and he blasphemed. This word, blaspheme, is nakav. A different word. And let me go back. Hul or chilel also means to be killed. Y'all trying to kill y'all's name. Y'all trying to kill it. Is going to stand. I'm going to stand for him. I'm, he's going to kill you before you ever can kill his name. That name has endured through centuries. No other day. It's a day to keep dying and popping up with a new name. Come back with a new name. Come back with a new name. Yahweh will stand forever. Blaspheme. Nakav. This means to curse. As in scrutinize. To bore and to pierce. Libel. Right, this is a, a, a term for slander, meaning say things about it that is not true, nor can you prove it to be true. To pep, to uh, perforate with more or less violence, to do violence to his name. That's what y'all have done in these lessons. Yes, it's like to try to kill him slow, like y'all little gangster niggas, like y'all be sucker, be yeah, y'all little little, little yeah. California shaking. Y'all think y'all gonna shake y'all? I'm gonna slice your neck off. Y'all over here trying to shank y'all. I'm going to slice your heads off. That's what they trying to do. They trying to shank them from behind. That's right. They're a bunch of cowards. And this Negro, this fathead Negro, this one said, I'm honored to do this. Well, I'm honored to dishonor you. I'm honored to be a reproach in your face.
to express with holes, strike through. Y'all think this is a joke. Let's see. And this little nigga blasphemed y'all's name and cursed, and they brought him to Moshe. His mother's name was Shalomit, the daughter of Debri of the tribe of Dan. They put him in custody until Yahweh will should be declared until Yahweh's will should be declared to them. They ain't know what to do with this Negro. And that's the problem with, even though y'all have attempted, there's been a few that have attempted to have this debate with the Ahaya niggas. The problem is, is that you speak with no authority. The problem is, is that you shake hands in the end. The problem is, is that you say, I still love you in the name of whatever. The problem is, is that y'all speak with the Quorum. And when you see that in the Torah, this is what the Torah says should be done. This is what y'all said when Moshe didn't know what to do. Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, bring him who cursed out of the camp and let all who heard him lay their hands on his head. That's right. Not just me. All you niggas that I don't like and don't like me either. Who cares? You say you worship the same one that I worship. Though I say you blaspheme his name too by your actions. But y'all allow, that's why I know the bro code is real. Real. It's real. All you got is your die is that I want to challenge your CC Elder Ricard to a debate on a higher. That's it, faggot. That's all. That's all. That's it. You don't want to go after him and lay your hands on him the way y'all said y'all should now. We don't lay hands, right? Lay your head. Everybody that hear them blaspheming Yahweh's name should have something to say in the comment box. Make another video. Make a thousand videos. Let them know that we will not stand for this. You're not seeing thundering come out the sky. That's not what y'all said. He said you lay hands on him. You want me to be loyal to you? You be loyal to me. But you shake hands with these people that blaspheme your father. A crime punishable by death. And every hand that hears it is supposed to be on that. I don't see no decorum. Tell me where the decorum is in this. Right? Where is the decorum in lay everybody what of the children it says everybody and let all who heard him say lay their hands on his head and let all the congregation what stone him how you do that with the quorum i don't know how you be circumspect when i'm supposed to stone you how do we stone with the word of yah you hit yah you get hit. You blaspheme his name, he gonna blaspheme your name. You uh, slight him, he's gonna slight you. You dishonor him, him, he's gonna dishonor you. You cut him, you try to shank him, he's gonna chop your heads off. You try to juke him in the butt, he's he gonna lay you up inside him and go, oh, to get raped. So don't tell me about the quorum. Yah does not call for the quorum here. And I'm going to show you in the New Testament that there's no the quorum when you blaspheme Yahweh's name. Yah's not going to sit somebody nicely and say, listen, brother, hey, you walking on a thin line. It's because I love you. I don't want to see you go to hell. You know, you're going to hell. You've already done it. There was no warning here. <clears throat> You shall speak to the children of Israel saying, whoever curses his Elohim shall what? Bear his sin. That's what I just read. Whoever does it is going to bear his sin. It's already on them. My job is to warn other niggas, stop listening to them. Don't do it. He who blasphemes Yahweh's name, he shall surely be put to death. And it's surely because we don't put people to death. That means he shall surely what? Die the second death. All the congregations shall certainly stone him. The foreigner, yup, the nations too. 
That's right. As well as the native born shall put to death when he blasphemes the name. That's how important Yahweh's name is. That's right. White, black, yellow, Jewish, Muslim, I don't care, Puerto Rican, kill him. Nobody gets away. Y'all don't allow the nations to do it, and he don't allow you to do it. But I'm saying again, that you go ahead and blaspheme. Keep blaspheming, right? So I want to, I'm not going to, I'm going to put this all up. I put it up already in the uh, video that I just did with um, Jabba the Hutt, Lies and Illiteracies, Mouth of Lies, Mouth of Flies. But I just want to play something to you. I, I want y'all to hear the arrogance, right? Here I go. I want y'all to hear the arrogance. I'm at times 224, and this little spit back and forth was about 15 minutes. Y'all can listen to the rest of it. I'm just going to play. Fail and begin to inject this name all over the earth. But again, that name is the Canaanite God. Yah meaning power and Hava, which means mischief, fallen one. That's Satan himself. And a matter of fact, there's a book out now. Okay, it's called uh, The Illuminati Two, <laughs> which it goes it goes into the fact that the Tetragrammaton is the God Lucifer. Okay, and, and the Masoretes and the Masons know this. So that injection okay. happened not only in Hebrew, and again. So, so, was, so wait, 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 so, so you're telling me. All right, you see what I'm saying? And I just read you that these froggies stole information from these froggies. Come on, we did our research. I was honored to bring this together. All he did was cipher lies. Like there's nothing wrong with, a, like it's nothing more wrong than a frog that catches his own flies than another frog that put his tongue in another fly in another frog's mouth to get that fly. That yeah, that's a, that's right. That's right. That's all. That's all. This one is. He stuck his tongue. He stuck his tongue in his froggy tongue to catch a dead fly that he already caught. <laughs> He don't even care that he's embarrassed. He thinks he's going up against scholars, y'all. Scholars. You see his hand on his head. He, he don't even know. How, oh, my goodness, nigga, you so dumb. And at the end of this, he embarrasses. He says, you know, and this was the best of them. I was told that these are the ones that don't curse. They got some intelligence. But this is the only one that had the nerve. Not to curse at people, but to curse the name of Yahweh. Do you see the devil in this? I'm telling you that these Negroes, this one right here, GOCC, and anyone that's going to take up his spirit and this fraud nigga that got the quorum or thinks he got the quorum is lower than the nigga who's cursing on the street. Because man can curse man and repent, right? Man can blaspheme man and get his soul. But can man blaspheme Yahweh? 
Oh, hell to the no. Don't tell me about me calling you names. You are off the lines. You are out of order. The arrogance of the way he speaks. Let me let me cue up the arrogance. I'm going to show you where his mentality is coming from. Well, you know what, what would help? It would help if you give, you, you would yield and actually give the floor back and give the our scriptures back to, to, to you know, because these I'm are, sorry, these they're not your scriptures, <laughs> sir. They, they were listen, given to the these, Christian church yeah, as a James, whole. James, listen. These scriptures were given through inspiration of our prophets. The, these are our forefathers, my forefathers. Here. That's your assertion. So, it, it, that's my assertion. And guess what? It's... You have no authority to tell me what's in this book. Well, you know, let, let me just ask one last thing here, and I, I think we've, we've yeah. pretty well wrapped, wrapped this up pretty well. Um... All right. So that was his end result game where he could not prove. He's like, dude, where are you getting this information from? Show this to me. Where are you getting this scholarship from? He like embarrassed him like, dude, the hell is wrong? He was like, obviously you don't know who you're talking to. Then he gonna quote to him the strong concordance of Haya. And he was like, dude, you, you listen to the... It, first of all, I don't use strong concordance because I teach Hebrew. I teach Hebrew and I teach Greek. Anyone that's going to use strong concordance, I have to use it because that's as far as y'all can go with the language. But I, you see me correct it when it's wrong because I'm already inside the language to know that this is false. But they use strong concordance. He was like, dude, what the hell is wrong with you? And in the end, he was speechless. He was speechless. And so he was like, man, this is a good dumb nigga. This is a good one to debate with. I'm going to embarrass the whole brew community with this one. Respectful, respectfully stupid. But this dude then went down a rabbit hole, bringing up books, reading every satanic book that there is to read. Studying the Kabbalah. Studying all the Kabbalahs. Studying books of magic. Why would you do that? Why would you stop? What would cause you to pick up and read books of magic, gods and goddesses. What would cause you to do that? That is a rabbit hole that once you start re reading that stuff, you start retaining that information and you can't make a difference. This is why he don't even understand where he's getting his understanding from. It's from Satan himself. All right. So like I said, then we got uh, this one, Gabar. Some reason, this is some arrogant, this is an arrogant nigga right here. I mean, he's my like, he don't have no respect in his, all his debates, he'll talk over top of you. He'll say a million words a minute. And I think I might've heard this one because there was a few people that said something in there that sounds similar to think. Well, um, let me just say this. I listened to this yesterday, and this guy, whoever this guy is, I don't, I'm not promoting him because I don't know what ultimately he, he stands for, but he's one that has done some good research, and he's saying a lot of good points, a lot of the points that I'm making. I, I'm, I'm more thorough, unfortunately, fortunately. Like, when I say unfortunate, like, you, you're better off getting it from me because I speak with authority in this debate. Though he's speaking truth, he couldn't get it all out. He sounds like he's pleading with him to listen to me. He sounds weak. And I'm not saying that he's weak. I'm saying that when you get in these platforms, you are in faggot land. You are told to kiss and make up and hug and kiss after it. So they're not, it's not a real match in ya. This is a game. However, he made some good points. I think y'all should go back and listen to this. You know, there's people calling in saying some things. He made some good points, points that I made and even others. But I want you to hear what he says. Now, he's no longer a part of GOCC. It looks like he just left GOCC maybe within the last year. Why? He was a high-ranking elder. High-ranking elder. Why is he no longer a part of GOCC? Not because of higher. Now, if you go on and you see his stuff, 
you're going to see Lord, God, and Christ all in his mouth. I don't hear a higher coming out like that, but I don't think he denounced it because he went so hard for it. You know what I mean? You know when you go so hard for something, you just got to silently not speak about it anymore? But it sounds like he left GOCC because he wants to be a womanizer. I'll get to that another time. But just as arrogant as he is in these debates with Ohio, is as arrogant he is about his theology about women in relationships, which is utterly disgusting. So I know that GOCC don't promote more than one wife at a time, but they do promote as in if your, if your wife ain't going to be in his faith, you can leave him get get somebody else type stuff. We know that Sister Connor is up here madaming and prostituting the men and the women all up in this land. Right, Kenneth? Listen to this crap. I want y'all to hear the devil in his speech. Now, I believe that he just got finished. Saying, somebody said, well, all this debationship about the name, it doesn't really matter. What really matters is that we keep the commandments. And this brother, Daniel Benyako said, well, well, that's why I chose to do this debate, actually, because it is one of the commandments, and it's a commandment that is worthy of death. And for you to speak like that about Yahweh's name, you are walking the tightrope of your salvation. That's why I'm bringing this out, because they're spreading lies based on lies, based on nothing. It has no legs. So this is his response. This is his response to him saying this. I want y'all to hear the arrogance in this statement. Yeah, um, I, I see where the brother's going with, with that. Um, you know, one thing I want to warn, the reason why uh, I chose this debate, chose to do this debate, is because of a law. And it's something that we covered earlier. I just want to, I want to quote from that law. That's uh, Leviticus 24, verse 16, where it reads, And he that blasphemeth the name of Yahweh, he shall surely be put to death. And all the congregation shall certainly stone him. As well, the stranger, as he that is born in the land, when he blasphemeth the name of Yahweh, shall be put to death. Now, when you when you blaspheme the Most High's name, I just want to I want to bring some clarity on on what that means. It means to puncture, literally, literally to perforate. All right, with more or less violence or figuratively to specify, designate. Notice it says libel, L I B E L. Now, when we look that word up, that's one of the parts of the definition, libel. Let me get let me get the Webster's definition for you right quick. It says a defamatory writing, libellus, famosus. Hence, an epithet being omitted. Now it, it also it says I'm going to read the verb to defame or expose to public hatred and contempt by a writing or picture to lampoon. Now we believe in the what, the evidence that we have, which is the tetragrammaton, and the GOCC, they're, they're putting out writings and public speaking against yep. the name that we believe is the Tetragrammaton. That is a sin punishable by death. That's so right. you're taking a big risk um, trying to say that this verb is, is the name and then claiming that Yahweh is pagan. Um, you guys that are doing this, you, you, you're playing with your salvation. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. all I have. Well, let me respond to that. Look, <clears throat> this is a, a, a clear. I want y'all to hear at his arrogant response. And you're going to hear Satan all in. Clear, clear tactic that most people. When they basically you're playing with your salvation. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. all I have. Well, let me respond to that. <clears throat> this is a, a a clear clear tactic that most people, when they basically got everything, because he said it. All the evidence that we have is the tetragrammaton. That's all we have. We 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 like I said, we are all ghetto scholars. We like I said, we are all ghetto scholars. Said we are all ghetto scholars. And then the next uh, situation, you know, you're gonna die if you. You know, a, a fearful scripture. I've been I've been dealing with those type of groups for 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 many years. That does not play with me anymore. Why? Because the only way we could get to the truth is to challenge, is to question, is to bicker, and without the fear. Because you know what? For many years we were calling on Jesus, we were calling on Buddha, we were calling on different names, and the Most High was still with us. So that fear uh, uh, factor, we have to drop that. It's old news. Let's investigate. Let's go outside America and let's try to get these records. Let's demand in, to Israel. We need to see the original text, not what you put on the Internet. We need to demand the truth and stop use, using the fear uh, factor to scare people from like, oh, you know, I don't want to mess around with the Mosai's name, you know. Uh, you know, I don't want to do that. So let me just, you know, 
you know, say, well, you know, it's all about feeling the commandment, which it is. And it's, it's also about feeling the commandment. Because, listen, I love the, 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 uh, this brother. Matter of fact, the reason why I decided to do this debate is because at least the brother is not out there running around cursing out everybody. And, and at least he's come to some level of, of respect. We live in doctrine, but at least we could, we could see another day. The problem with our people is that we think that the, the life depends on our debate, winning or hating a debate. Let me tell you something. I deliberately didn't tell much people in my church that, not, that I'm doing this debate today. Why? Because I wanted to know what's out there. I knew that nine times out of ten when people come in, they, 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 uh, they will bring their, their, their supporters. I wanted, I wanted to, get make, to make me sharper. So really, I did this debate not for the glory. Nobody in my church is going to hear this other than unless they, they, they will hear it on, on, you know, on, on YouTube. People were telling me, hey, Elder, you debating? Because I know, brother, uh, you know, Sal, you, you put a video together, or, or, or you, brother. I, I didn't even know that. I, I didn't care because you know what? It's about shopping my sword. And that's what we have to start thinking and doing, searching for the truth. Why is that? Why, why is there's two names there? Why is Yah there? Ova. What's that? What's going on? We got to keep guys until we accept what our, uh, the, the, the elite say it is, you know, until we accept we, the, the, uh, uh, what it is, we're always going to get in that wall because we have to wait for someone to tell us. The reason why I appreciate Look certain things says. that come from us, like the 12 tribe breakdown. I appreciate that because it came from us. We didn't have a white man to tell us that that was the breakdown. The reason why I appreciate that the name Ahaya came from us because we are going against the system. It came from us. A black man discovered that. 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 Not a white dude in some, in some scholarly... Listen, we have to start depending on the system and set up our own scholarship. And brother, you're a scholar. I'm a scholar. We have to stop thinking that we have to wait for the white men to validate the scholars. Hell with that. Let's set up our own nation and let's, let's debate among ourselves and set up our own situation without what the scholar says. Yeah, we could use the scholars. Listen, I, 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 I read the Talmud. I read the Meshrach. I read the, the, the Quran. But I'm my own man. I make my own decision. I make my own decision. I make my own decision. Because you know why? Because the Supreme Being, the Heavenly Father... The great I am is in me. 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 We're smart. We can figure this out without going to these institutions to keep us more dumb. So that's my statement. That's it. To, to that question. You hear the blasphemy? Ricard says after he couldn't answer the question, why, why even speak? Why go and challenge the devil if you don't want to have a fair trial in the devil's court? Why go speak, as you say to them, why go speak to scholars if you're not going to come and you're going to tell the scholars, well, um, I can't really beat you, so why don't you stand down and give me back the court? You have no authority to tell us. That's not true at all. Y'all gave them the authority to tell us what was originally in the book. What they don't have the authority is to tell us how to walk out our spirituality and righteousness. What they don't have the authority to do, because if they did have the authority, they wouldn't be trying to figure out the meaning of these things. I'm not saying words. I didn't say words. The meaning of the liturgy, of the prophecy, of understanding the nature. They don't understand it like that. And even in understanding it, they don't know Yahweh. And even in that, they have not sought it through walking out righteousness. They don't have the authority to do that. But Yah has given the, them the authority to hold our books because we wouldn't have it if it wasn't for them. And to give us back what was in there and tell us this was or this wasn't. They have never, first of all, Satan, don't hide the truth. Niggas do. It, how could they say, if you want to hide it, from a nigga, put it in a book. All right. The great I am is in me. You see the arrogance? And we can figure this out for ourselves. We can become a nation. We can do our own scholarship. We don't need them. Let's come to the table and fight and duke it out and figure it out for ourselves. Oh, we can use their scholarship. Just don't use their scholarship. If you listen to his whole dissertation, it's backwards. He says we shouldn't listen to it because it's all Jewish and white people and they all the devil. But then he's bringing false scholarship from Jewish and white and magicians that he's saying is Jewish or white people. So just because they're Jewish don't, that don't mean that we can't listen to it. And then he comes with dumb reasoning. There's so much evidence that his name is Yahweh. It can't be Yahweh. Y'all got to listen to this foolishness. There's so much evidence that it is Yahweh that it can't be Yahweh.
because Satan would never allow that. Right? That's that's basically what his argument is. Ain't that crazy? I know it's not Yahweh because it's there. <laughs> why do we have two? That's what I said. Why do we have two names? They cannot dismiss the many names doctrine without trying to shame Yahweh. Because it ain't going to work. But they can't disprove it. They can't prove that Ahia is a name. Never once did he say, this is my name. Never, even in the scripture they're reading. They're not, they, they're not reading, Ahia is my name. This is the arrogance. And then, of course, I'm not going to play this one, the debate where he goes against Michael Hessler, another uh, linguistic, historical, biblical scholar of Shemitic. And this Negro is going to argue with him and say some stupid stuff again and claim once again that Yahweh is Satan and the devil and Lucifer. And he gets schooled by him. I don't agree with everything that Michael Hessler says. But it's enough to disprove what he's trying to say about Ahia or Ehiye. One of the problems that they got, this is where they're real dumb and they think it. Because Baal is also not a proper name. It is a title or a term. Right? The term Baal means Lord. And that, type, that term has been what? used, as I showed you in last week's lesson, in place of Yahweh, because of how the Eastern doctrines viewed deities. As Yah said, that every, the sons of men, right, that he divided the heavens amongst the sons of men. What does that mean when he said he divided the heavens? But, but Israel is his inheritance. That means that he allowed fallen angels or angels or principalities to have dominion over a heaven, over a cloud, over a specific land. Fallen or not, he allowed it. How do we know this? Enoch tells you, give me, ten, to, to, uh, give me a tenth portion so that I can do my bidding on the earth through the sons of men. But Yah has not allowed, allotted those things for us Yahweh is our portion. He is the father of us over, and we are his land. But because we have this ide ideology of landlords, the one that owns the house, that means that person, if you don't respect the house, can come in and do whatever he wants to you in the house. It's called a landlord. And this is the conception of deities. That's why they go to different mountains. Let's go over in this place, over in this place, over this mountain, in that heaven. Maybe if we summon another landlord, a, a, a different Baal, a Baal of this, a Baal of that, a Baal of this. Baal means Lord. Adonai means Lord. Lord means Lord. Kyrios means Lord. Yahweh means I am he that was, is to come, and forever will be, forevermore, eternal existence, the will that will be. He is not a landlord. He is the king of the universe. What y'all don't understand about that? So because they have this ideology, about landlords, they call everything Baal that had a power, a Baal. And they call themselves using that term for Yah, as I just showed you the book, but Yah did not permit it. And he spoke against it. And he spoke against it because he knew that we would do it. But that does not make Yahweh Satan or the devil now. That does not make him Lucifer or evil now. Okay? So, it's because of this right here in Hosea, I believe this is the uh, second chapter, Hosea, the second chapter, starting from 14. 
This is one of the, if you ask them, tell me more about this Ahaya, which, why you say this Baal, Yahweh's Baal? They'll read this for you. Therefore, behold, I will allure her. This is a last day prophecy, correct? So whatever state that he's talking about, it's got to be us now, right? All right. Therefore, I will allure her and bring her into the what? The wilderness. They believe in the wilderness. We believe in the wilderness. And speak tenderly to her. I will give her vineyards from there. And a valley of our core, meaning a valley of trouble, a wide space of trouble for a door of hope, meaning a small door that we're going to gather to be gathered. For people that don't understand the parable of what he's saying, you can go back to wait, wait on Yah. And I explain that the word hope, those that hope in Yah, means to be gathered in his name. And she will respond there as in the day of youth. And as in the day when she came up out of the land of Israel. It will be in that day, says Yahweh, that you will call me my husband. But the word is not my husband. The word is is she, my man, my man, right? No longer will you call me master. That's an English transliteration. It's not master, it's Bali, Bali, for I will take away the names of Baals out of her mouth and they will no longer be mentioned. They will, they will no longer be mentioned by name. What name are we calling upon? So they have this deuces as this is the last day prophecy that awake, so-called awakened nigger brew Israel, nigger brews, that's not Israel, y'all. Black melanated nigger brews in America. What do they call? What do they worship? Who? I, can somebody come up and say, what, what, what is it that they call it? This is how they're deducing that Yahweh is Baal. Because this is the last day prophecy. Nobody says Baal any longer. Does anybody say Baal? Well, I, I, yes. Yes, but he's the dude that's the just nigger brews. What does nigger brew say? The Lord. Huh? The Lord. I know, but they say Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Right? So they have this deuces, and in their minds, they think that the ratio of nigger brew of fakening is like 10, 10 million thousand. When Israel is like the sands of the sea, or what they call Israel as the black melanated people that came through the translated states from, from, from all the way from Congo, from Brazil, from the islands, from Jamaica, from Canada, from, from where we are now, all the way to France, London, and all of that. They think that the majority of nigger brews is the majority of our people right now. And because they will use um uh, what they say, Ahaya Basham Shaya Shaya, Ashaya Masha Shaya, Haya Shaya, Haya Mashaya, Mashama Shaya, and Yahweh Shai, I right? Right? Barakata, Barakata, Basham Shasha, Bashama Shaya, Hashaya Yahawa, Bashama Shaya, right? Atawada, right? Because they all have picked up the Lahashawa foolishness, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh and Yahuwah in this awakening and awakening, they think that that means all of Israel. Now, there is none of them except the one, except the diet is writing a book now, and he still put Adonai in there, which means Lord. All of you listening to me now, unless you read Hebrew, you shouldn't really be opening up a Hebrew book because you can't read it. And if you read, if you can read the Hebrew, now I'm not totally understand it. What do you have to do to understand what it's saying? You got to go back to an English translation, right? And all of you, how many years have black people owned their own Bibles? How long? Maybe a hundred years? We've had a Bible. They gave us a Bible in 300, 200 years ago, right? 300 years. The black man has had a Bible, and then it's maybe in the last 150 years, uh, the black men's have had a Bible, and 
<laughs> in the last 100 years, every Black man and woman has a Bible. In fact, over the last 20 years, y'all got 100 Bibles. You can't read Hebrew, it's that Yiddish. You can't read Paleo-Hebrew without that Yiddish. So you got to go back to the King James Version. Tell me, even though there is probably like 3% of the black population, that is like Hebrews is probably not even 1% of the sands of the sea of the black population that they call in the lost tribes. Not even 1%. What is the majority of lost Israel calling upon? Open up your Bibles right now in the language that you speak, understand, and tell me what you read when you read Exodus 3, 14, 15, and 16. Tell me what it says. The Lord thy God. What is Israel calling on now? And has been calling on for the past thousands of years, even through slavery, and even now as we speak, and even in the camps. What do they say? Our Lord and Savior, Basham Basham Mahashaya, Shaya Shaya, Mahawashaya, Barakata. But they always going to come back to the, our Lord in Christ, our Lord God. That's Baal. Oh, you don't believe it? It's not Yahweh. It's not Yahuwah. It's not Yahuwah, even though those are blasphemous, holy. They put holes in it. They bore it. They bore his name. They cut it up. They messed it up. They've defiled it. But they still recognize the Yod Wahe. They've recognized the Yod Wahe. Their ignorance is not about that. Their ignorance is on another level, but your ignorance is on something else. And because you read this, knowing that it says that he's going to take away the names of Baals out of our mouth, what do we call him in Brazil? They don't speak English. If they spoke English, what would they call him? The Lord. If they spoke Spanish, what would they call him? Huh? Senor, which means what? Sir, Lord is another way uh, of Kyrios. Senor Deus. Senor Deus. If you was in uh, Brazil, what would you call him? Senor Deus. Deus. Um dia. Vai com dia. Is where we get the word day from. Deus, Dios, Deus, Zeus. Don't play. Señor, 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 Lord God. Deus. Kyrios, Deus, Lord God. That's what you call them. That's the Baalins in your mouth right now. Even as I speak, they themselves, the Ahaya, do not stick to Ahaya, do they? They say, our Lord and Christ and Savior, that's what they say. That is the term Baal, Lord and God, Dios and Deus, Kyrios and Adonai. That is the term that you have used in place of Yahweh. Open up your books and tell me it ain't the truth. Go on every black channel and even every Hebrew channel and see if they don't still use the term Lord, Christ, God, and master, they still use it. That's how we know what it is. Now, let's go into the word because this fool tried to strong concordance that, right? Ba'ali, the E is for mine. And they put a symbolic name. It's not a symbolic name. A symbolic term, how about that, for Yahweh? What does that mean? That Yahweh is Baal? No, it means that they replaced Yahweh 
with this term. And I showed you in the book that we did that. And I'm just reading it for you right now that we did that, right? And what does it mean? It says a symbolic name. That's not his name. From Baal, what does Baal mean? It says my master, but they play it. A symbolic name for Jehovah. Which one? Let's go to Baal. Let's see what it means. This doesn't tell you what it means. What do you read? Lord or owner? My Lord. That's what's on your mouth. My master and my Lord. And y'all have defined that as a bridegroom married relationship. And it is not the relationship that Yah wanted with Israel. He did not want to lord over us. He did not want to master over us. He wanted to be a husband man. And that is a different relationship. When we say Ishi, my man, then we, Israel, the woman, will be what? Willingly in submission. Free will will be unified with Yahweh's will. That is a marriage. That is the relationship that he created us for. Not for him the Lord and master and rule over us like that. And we just obey. Obey came when we disobeyed. That is the relate. Oh, 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 I'm not telling the truth. What do every camp right now from Demona to the Ahaya camp to all these nigger brew camps have their women call they men? My Lord. Not my man. Because you can't say my man if he's not only your only man. You can't claim it. You can't claim him as my man if he got different women. So you got men teaching that women must be in not free submission, free will, but in obedience. And you got men, women calling a man's Baal, my Lord, my Lord. They won't say my Yahweh. They won't say my Ehye. They say my Lord. And that is the title that you have taken to express yourself in the image, symbolically, in the essence of Yahweh. And you are an idol. The Baals are you. You say it's your house as if women didn't help build it. Work for it, slave over it. You say it's your food as if you're the only one that work for it, cook it, grow it. You act like you're the Lord, the master over the house, the Lord. You are not Lord over anybody. That means you got slaves and we are servants, helpers. We are not slaves in free will. Hallelujah. So let me, let, I just want to knock that out the way that this is one of their dumb, foolish um, misinterpretations of the Bible, knowing that prophetically that we call our Yahweh, we call Yahweh Lord. That is the term that he wants to, and that's the term that they still acknowledge, Lord in Christ. Oh, I didn't get into Christ yet because that's how I know that they under Rosh Hashanah's they under governments, they under uh, Freemasonry, and they under some kind of occult. They've been summoned by the occult. I know this for a fact when they refuse to take Lord and Christ out their mouth. Christ is not an English word. It's not even a Greek word. It's a loan word from Egypt. Christos is not an original word that was coined in Greek. It was a loan word that they got from Egypt. And what did it mean? We all go into it. 
And Egypt affected their deities from all the way from India, Pakistan, uh, Pakistan, Syria, Persia, Medo-Persia, Babylon. Egypt was affected. Their gods and deities and their loan words were out to the whole world until y'all destroyed it. We're going to get into this word, Christ, that is a transliteration from the word Christos, which is a transliteration from another word in Egypt. And what does it mean? It does not mean anointed one. They have substituted the word Christos for Messiah. Messiah in Greek is not Christos. All right. And then not, last but not least, I'm going to show you why this is important, why he don't get no decorum from me. First of all, none of these niggas that lie on y'all's word because his word is his name. And he says, I'll magnify my word above my name. So you get blasphemed too when you what? Blaspheme y'all's word and do violence to his word. But much more, y'all think that I've roasted before? Oh, you come do it. Do it. You're going to get roasted. And I'm not done. But don't think that it's just a roast. I don't speak slander. I'm speaking truth. Right? We supposed to get baptized in the name of the what? The Father. Not a title. Not a similitude. Not a symbolic name. We supposed to get baptized in the name of the Father, which is what? Yahweh. Yahweh. In the name of the son, which he said, I came in my father's name. What, what, what is that? Which means Yahweh saves. And the name of the Holy Spirit, what's that? A what? What's the name of the Holy Spirit? Yahweh. You see what I'm saying? People might ask why I haven't gone after people that are Yahushua yet. I'm going to deal with Yahushua last but not least, but the most powerful. Because he gave all authority to Yehoshua and is is Yehoshua HaMashiach, not the Christ. But the Holy Spirit got the same power and this is what he said. I want them to what's the name of the Holy Spirit? That's the angel of Yah. Then one possessed by a demon, blind and mute, was brought to him and he healed him so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw it. nobody, no demon, no principality, no landlord, no deity ever did what was done in the name of Yahweh during the time of Elijah. I keep getting Ezekiel and Elijah messed up. Nobody ever did in the name of Yahweh and Yehoshua the miracles that was done through the prophets Elijah. Do the prophet Moshe and do the prophets of Yahushua and Yahushua himself. Nobody. That's why witches would worship those two names. In those names, there was healing. There was a report. There was power that went out. Not magic. Power that went out in those two names across the world. So much so that somebody, the king of Syria, came all the way up to get healed from leprosy. Elijah brought back a dead boy from life. Elijah made the oil and the water not, it not run out. They healed lepers. Nobody ever did that because this is genetic diseases. Nobody, Buddha didn't do it. Nobody did it. Nobody did that in Egypt. They still do what? They was doing surgery and they still do it now. And then Yahushua comes on the scene and his apostles and all power all authority was given to Yahushua, which means Yahweh saves. Through the Holy Spirit, which is also Yahweh. And they have never seen such things done in this name. Why wouldn't those that study witchcraft and gods and goddesses take up Yahweh, Yahushua? Why wouldn't they? When all they want is what? Power. If they discover that there's a power above another power, why wouldn't they acknowledge it? Why would they blaspheme something that has proven to be the most powerful? You stupid. You don't even understand the mind of witchcraft. I didn't say Satan. I said witchcraft. 
or those that want to practice it. What allures somebody into witchcraft is the power. And once Yahweh has them, we see that with Simon's sons, right? I think it was two sons. Uh, what's that? The priest. They was exorcists, right? Who knows what name they were called? It must have been Elohim. I don't know what name. They was exorcistizing all over the land. But when they saw the power of exorcism in Yahushua's name, they tried it. And what happened? Didn't work for him because he didn't know him. He says, he healed so that the blind and the mute man both spoke and saw. All the multitudes were amazed and said, can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this man does not cast out demons except by what? Baal Zabub, another Baal, another Lord of the flies or the lies, right? The prince, the prince, the prince of demons. Who's Beelzebub? Satan himself. If knowing their thoughts, Yahushua said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every, and every city or house divided against itself would not stand. If Satan, right? That's what I said. That is Satan himself. But El is Satan. But he cast out demons in the name of Yahushua. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? He's not saying that Satan can't cast out Satan. He's saying that he replaced one Satan for another. He's saying that you that Satan doesn't really cast out demons, but it's a trick. It's a sleight of hand. Because he's the prince of demons, that means he rules other Satans. There's more than one Satan. Satan is also not a proper name. Is a spirit. And Satan can cast out Satan, but not really. He'll put another Satan in it. That's why you can have one true thought and many thoughts. And you sitting there trying to cast out Satan with Satan. And you're going to, you still won't stand. Because you have to take on the mind of Yahushua, not another thought but the truth. So yes, you can take one Satan out only to take another one in. Right? So he's saying that Satan don't really cast out Satan. He replaces it, thinks you got healed of that one and puts another Satan there. He's the prince of demons. Therefore, they, they will be your judges. Who's going to be the judges? The demons themselves. I'm going to give them over to you to judge you. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. But who's the judge? How, how, how can the demons be the judge? That's why they don't understand. How can they be the judge over us? Who has allowed them to become our judge? What? Satan or Yahushua? That's what they didn't understand. That Yehoshua, he may be the prince, but Yehoshua is the king of all power. And everything is subject to Yehoshua, even the demons. But if he takes his hands off of you, that is him allowing the demons, go ahead and judge him. Take them in their own heart. But if I by the spirit of Elohim, cast out demons, then Elohim's kingdom has come upon you. You are healed. Or how can one enter into the house of the strong man and plunder his good unless he first bind the strong man? Then he will plunder the house. He who is not with me is against me, and he who doesn't gather with me scatters. Here's the point. Therefore, what's the therefore? Therefore, I tell you, every sin, you said I sinned against you. Okay. No, I didn't. But you said, and every blasphemy, you said I blasphemed your name. No, I didn't. Will be forgiven. Y'all will forgive me. Yes, even a woman of my stature. But the blaspheme, the blasphemy, 
against the spirit will not be forgiven of men. You think me calling you names is equal to the blasphemy of you blaspheming the name of Yahweh the Father and the name of the Holy Spirit, Malik Yahweh, the angel of Yah. You think that's on equal level? I'll blaspheme you all day long. You can blaspheme me all day long. But you blaspheme the name of Yahweh, you're going straight to hell. And there's no forgiveness for you. That's how I know that when y'all come to this higher, you're reprobate. You have already said, I am. You mad at Yah for something. You mad at his will. You don't like his will. In his will, you didn't get your way. In Yahweh, you didn't get a higher. So now you're going to worship a higher instead to get your way. Kenneth right now is reprobate. He doesn't believe that Yahweh is not his name. He's mad at Yahweh because in the name of Yahweh through me, it cursed him because he blasphemed in his actions because he was wicked in his way and he wanted to become a leader and he wanted to use women to do it and abuse and misuse and flirt with women to get in a high status. He's a prostitute man. He's a temple prostitute. But I wouldn't let him juke up behind me. I wouldn't let him go me from behind. And he got busted for his wickedness. So therefore he could never get in my, he wanted money and fame. You notice he was up there on every Shabbat. Shh, 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 shh. And up, that was his way to get in there so other ladies to, to, to act like he up there with us. He wanted my pockets, the money that he thinks that I have. And he wanted my status. He wanted me to lift him up as my as, as my right hand man. And I was never gonna. After three offenses, he knew there was no way. Even if I had forgiven him, and he had apologized for what he had did and how he treated the brothers and how he um gave false counsel to the brothers and to the women and to the men, had I forgiven him for the third time of his falsifying and breaking the commandments of Yah and polluting the minds of the people here. Had I forgiven him, he knew that he wasn't going to get what? A higher, his will. There was no way that I was going to ever climb him up to the status that he only ran out here for. So then he went and found another dumb one. Not another one, because he came through. He can't. Now, nah, when I say another one, he tried to climb up the ladder through uh, the Bora Watchmen. He don't follow men. But there's nowhere else for him to climb. He to climb all the way through the skirts of a woman to the head of a woman, and there's nowhere else to go. So now he's just going to mimic, uh, what's his name, Rakhar. And kind of stupid, she don't know that this dude is planning and plotting to undermine him once he gets his status. So like I said, a man could sin against a man. If you say that I've sinned against you, show it to me. You didn't say sin. You said the coral. Circumspect. That I didn't come with, you know, class. I don't, I don't see that word for prophets. Don't tell me about the board. Don't tell me about who I showed you. I read it to you. You say I sinned against you, I apologize for believing what I believed, but admitting that I'm not sure. Okay, but I said you guilty anyway, fathead nigga. You guilty anyway because you just, after seeing my receipts, you denied what I said as if I exaggerated what happened on that phone. That's what happened with your wonderful best moray in the world. That's the truth. And if you don't want to believe that, then I didn't lie. You are the same knucklehead nigga that got on the phone. 
Y'all are one spirit. That's what I said. So once again, you think I blaspheme you? Okay, and I'm gonna keep blaspheming. I'm gonna keep blaspheming you as long as you keep blaspheming the Holy Spirit, which is the word of truth. Like you don't even have to say Yahweh, just keep blaspheming the word of truth, the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so that's what I got to say. Um, I was trying to make that shorter, but you know. <laughs> Let me make me bigger so he know. Um, listen, go ahead. Look forward to part three. If and it might be, I mean, I'm sorry, part four and part five, and which which is all his points that I said before. I'm dealing with all of his points. Um, I know that they want to make this a battle about me being a woman and that a woman shouldn't speak. And we should, you should not, they, all they want to do is for you not to listen to me because they scared that if you listen to me, you're going to find out that they're the ones that's lying, right? And there's no court in this world, not even Yahweh's court that would dismiss the evidence of a woman just because she's a woman. I don't have to be a prophet, though I am. I don't have to be a messenger of Yah, though I am, but my testimony is true. And so I'm going to say it again. In this lesson, I'm not teaching. I'm giving my witness against his false testimony. I'm giving a witness. You don't have to listen to none of my lessons. Just listen to me show you false witness against my witness. That's not me teaching. And so... They can make it a woman thing all they want. All they're going to do, like, listen, you, you, you know that it's a transsexual agenda. You know that, right? That the spirit of transsexual is on them. They are women, nevertheless, right? Because they're going to cry and not deal, like, deal, deal with the sword, deal with the word, deal with what I said, right? I'm going to show they're going to misquote the word or anything that they're going to say. They're going to slander and they're going to come with the same false decorum that they claim me of not having the, the, the lack of class and they're going to show their own um, bro code to the best of their ability, but I'm going to still stick to the issue. Right. And let me tell you what this transgender homosexual take over women. Um, in that is the hatred of women that any woman that stands up to challenge a man that I'm just going to become a woman, man, and I'm going to box her like a man though I'm pretending to be a woman, right? Because they like to see women get destroyed by a man, right? That Don't get fooled. <laughs> don't get fooled. No, I'm not dumb enough to pick up a literal sword with you Negroes. I am not that power and that strength. I'm a woman, but I'm a strong woman in the word of Yah. I'm a soldier in his army, and I can pick up the sword of the word. I could cast down every imagination, every word against the truth, every word against Messiah. I have a right to pick up the sword, the word, and cast down lies. And I'm a fierce warrior at that. But you're not going to get to my vagina. You make it about woman, and I'm going to break it about you blaspheming in the name of Yahweh all day long. And guess what? Your nigga Bruce, though you may command them and try to get them not to listen to me, y'all are so full of faggot entertainment where you love seeing women get destroyed and y'all are going to brag about how y'all going to destroy me. You know they want to see me swing back to see how I swing, right? They want to see if I go like this. <laughs> right? They want to see if I'm going to have 10 black eyes, busted lip, all of that at the end of this fight. They want to see that. And because they want to see that, by you speaking more and more about me or whatever they is going to do, is go they're going to listen to the lesson. You know that, right? They're going to listen. The more you tell them, don't listen to her, they're going to listen. They may not like me, but they're going to listen. And when they listen, no matter how much they dislike me, they still going to realize that you a liar. And some of them might be like, you know what? I don't like no woman, you know, swinging with no man. But I ain't gonna lie, she swore with that nigga. <laughs> like, she busted that nigga up, knock out. Then the nigga had the nerve to get back up. 
and tried round two, and he tried to get back up and try round and got knocked out again. And she's swinging. She's swinging. And no, it doesn't mean that I ain't going to get hit in the eye, right? I might have a little like <laughs> when they done with me. My lip might be buzzing and like, no, they didn't. But I'm going to knock you <laughs> you're not getting up when I'm done. You're not going to get up when I'm done. In the name of Yahweh, I declare it now. Take your stance, Ahaya, your will. And I'm going to show you the will of Yahweh in this battle that you will not win. Mark it. Mark it. You will not win. You will not win against the war that I, Deborah, the feminine word of Yah has raised up an army to fight against other niggas that lie. And so everybody that watches me, Yah has given you a command, not the word of Deborah, the word of Yah through the word of Deborah Yah, the word of Yah in feminine has told you the word of Yah to pick up a stone and stone every single one of them that blasphemes the name of Yahweh. Pick up a stone. Everyone blaspheme them. Everyone call them out for being a snake, a Satan, and a liar, a witchcraft, and a warlock, a player of death. Witchcraft is spells, and they do tell tales that lie. They spin words so fast that you cannot fly. That's a witch and a warlock, and that's what they are. And we should not suffer a warlock to live. Thus says Yah, come for me. Come for the word of Yah. You will be taken down. And while Kenneth the faggot sits back and watches this fight to think that he knows how to swing, I'm not going to deal with Kenneth with no scholarship. That nigga don't know the word. He don't know no scholarship. He can't speak. He's still speaking my words at the end of the day. Right. He's gurgitating my teachings at the end of the day. He has nothing for me except lies. But I dare him. I will not, Kenneth, trust me. I know you would love to think that I will allow you to get into a word battle with me of the word. You are not worthy, nigga. You're not worthy. You are not even on the level of these niggas to speak like them about a height. You don't know what you're talking about. All you did was get a woman that you seduce temporarily to like you for a moment, use her to pay your bills, to go in and sign up for Ricard's Hebrew Academy, steal it, you stole it, and you put it on a disc, and you gave it because you made an oath with this woman, what's her name? Connor, because she's a thief, to steal Elder Ricard's false teachings and make it your own. This, Kenneth, I'm letting you know now, you will never, you will never reach a status that I will ever do a lesson against your words. Everything that you can possibly say, I've already defeated because all you're doing is stealing everybody's words. You're a thief and you're a pathological liar the way you said you was. And anyone dealing with you kind of knows that already about you. But she's fronting for a car. Like I say, y'all playing each other. But will, what will happen, Kenneth, if you dare stand up and think that you can go against me of the word of Yah, I got something else coming. Trust me, you have no idea. I got something else coming for you and you won't recover from this one. But it won't be, I promise you, it won't be a word. It won't be a battle of the word. You, you, you not, you're not heavyweight enough. You're not worthy. You under my feet. And, and that's when my feet is dirty. That's right. 
You are the doodle underneath my sandal. That's what I got to say. Come for it. I'm, I'm serious about this. Don't play with me. I, a woman of my status, who am I? I bless y'all by the grace of Yahushua, though I'm not worthy. Because I was everything else that you can possibly call me right now. I was witch, right? I was a, a, a wicked, wicked woman. I was a seducer. I was a performer. I was an enchanter. I was a liar. I was a thief. I was a fornicator. I was anything you can call me. I was all of that. But thanks be to Yahweh, I am what I am. What am I? I am the prophetess that come to tell you the word of Yahweh now and the testimony of Yahushua, what he can do for you in truth and in righteousness. But I still got a job. I still got to face niggas. And so Sibaya talks to people that got respect, respectability with respect. But I don't speak to niggas with honor and respect. Thus says Yah. Look forward to the higher conspiracy. And there's more conspiracies that I'm going to unfold for you by Mr. Malak and the California Hebrews illiteracy and deception. A mouthful lies, a mouthful flies. See line.